As a player and broadcaster, George Kell left a mark on Tiger Stadium that'll never be forgotten. George, you know something? I don't know of anybody who spent more time in Tiger Stadium than you did. You were a player for seven years. Uh, you broadcast for 38 years. That's 45, George. And, you know, the record before that was Harry Heilman. He played, uh, he played 17 years. He broadcast for 17. That's 34. <laughs> but you did 45. It's amazing. It's amazing. And the time went by so fast. And, and you know something? That if I had not have broken down like an old man's supposed to break down, and uh, first I had a knee replacement, then a back operation, I might have still been broadcasting today. What did that place mean to you, George? You know, we all had to have a feeling about it, uh, but I know your feeling has to be very, very sensitive because you were so close to it in so many ways, first as the player, as I said, then as the broadcaster. Tiger Stadium, I'll just say that to you, Tiger Stadium. Well, i tell you, it means so much to me. The day that I was traded, Mr. Mack called me up to his suite. Now, I've read several different versions, but I'm going to tell you exactly how it happened. He called me up to his suite in the Book Cadillac Hotel, and he said, George, I've traded you to Detroit. And I was shocked. I thought when you were traded to somebody that you were rejected. Nobody wanted you. They wanted to get rid of you. Uh, but he went on to say, you are going to be a good ball player, and you're going to make a lot of money, and Detroit can pay you, and I cannot pay you. And... I went out, to, and he says, you go on out to Tiger Stadium, and you go up and see Mr. Uh, uh, Troutman. George Troutman, yeah. See Mr. Troutman. And I went in to see Mr. Troutman, and he said, uh, how much money are you making? And I said, Mr. Troutman, I'm making $6,500. But I didn't think that was enough money because I've been in the big leagues two years, and I've played every game, and I've played good for Mr. Mack. And we've discussed it, and he said I was worth more money, but... He said, if you have a good year this year, I'll give you the 2000 at the end of the year. And he said, George, you've already had a good year, or the Detroit Tigers would not want you, and I'm going to give you the 2000 right now. So he signed me to an $8,500 contract, and at the end of the season, he said, you did what you told Mr. Mack was going to do. You had a good year, so I'm giving you 2500 more. Now, that's what Detroit meant to me. I thought I'd found gold in the streets somewhere. <laughs> Hank Greenberg was the one that took me under his wing. And I never will forget, toward the end of the season, and I was having a good year, I, I'd hit 300 everywhere I'd been, but I came to the major leagues from a Class B league where I hit 396 at Lancaster, and Mr. Mack bought my contract. And so coming from a Class B to the majors, I wasn't quite ready to play big league ball. But I knew I could hit, and I was hitting over 320 in Detroit for the time I was there. And for the season, I was hitting over 320. And one day I went 0 for 5, and they booed me. <laughs> and when we came in, Hank Greenberg came over and sat down by my locker, and he said, George, you want me to tell you something? He started laughing. He said, you've got it made. I said, what do you mean made? He said, they don't boo you till you, till you are successful. He said, they booed me throughout my career after I became successful till the day I left here. And um, he said, they're going to boo you now when you don't go good because they expect you to hit 300 every year and, and uh, make the all-star team. What was it like, George, uh, playing in that ballpark at that time after the war? What made Tiger Stadium special? Right after the war, I think they reached a million people for the first time in several years. But in 1950, when we had the best club we ever had while I was in Detroit, we had seven guys that hit 300. We had Evers and Wirtz and Growth and uh, uh, Pretty had played second base mm -hmm. and uh, Lippon hit 290-something and Colloway right at 300 and myself. And we drew 1,950,000 people, which was the record for a number of years before they ever went over 2 million people. It was just, it was the thing to do in Detroit, to come to the Tiger ball game. If you were a member of the Detroit Tiger Baseball Club, you were almost like a god in Detroit, people. I couldn't believe a country boy like me and just a kid that they treated me like they did. 